y'all, Russ here at Beer TV. Welcome. Check it out. We're on Route 66. We're cutting up here to I-40. We're going to be making one epic trip all the way up through the southern part of Utah. There's Interstate 40. That's exit 139 at Crookton Road. High mountain desert. Really looking forward to this trip. Had a great time at the Fun Run event. That's over. It's time to do some miles in the month of May 2024. Well, let's jump on I-40. Gonna cut through uh, Ash Fork up here. I thought we'd take a little side trip through Williams. Gonna spend the night at a KOA in uh, Flagstaff. And then first thing in the morning, we are trucking straight north all the way up to Lake Powell. I filmed up here, we did the museum a few weeks ago that we'd run through town. There's a storyboard I miss. We'll check that. We have time today. I figured a layover in Flagstaff would be perfect. It's already uh, mid-afternoon, be late evening time I get up there. That will give us a good early start to get up on to Lake Powell. Alright, we're going to cut through this part of the old road, old Route 66. Up here's those uh, flagstone quarries where they sell all the rock. Huge business. A lot of people use it for sidewalks, fireplace mantles, all kinds of things. It is just piled to the ceiling and very plentiful up here. Off to the right here's there's one of the old motels, very famous. Also, if you didn't see it, Museum's right up here, right there to the right. I'll put a link in the description for that video. We did that a few weeks ago. Alright, the town splits two one ways here. On the other side is a storyboard. Gives quite a bit of history on Ash Fork. I didn't film it last time, so I thought we'd stop and catch that before we shoot on up to Williams. Old, old town. Tons of mining history here. If you want to beat the heat in the summer, these are the kind of areas you want to come up when it's over 100 down the valley, down the deserts. Up here in the mountains, you can usually catch 70, 80 degree days. See how old the buildings are. Hey, catch a cold one at the Oasis Lounge. <laughs> I'm sure you hear some stories in that place, huh? <laughs> cool. Little trees are blooming. It's turning springtime. May in the mountains. All 
All right, up here I'm actually going to do a U-turn. We're going to cut up the other side. This is a little business district down here. They got their store and gas station. But right up here, it'll loop right back around. Straight ahead is back on I-40 and also uh, Highway 89, which cuts down to Prescott. That's what we took last time. All right, here we go. Go find that storyboards. So now we're trucking back towards the west. Old motels up through here. I mean, look at the stone buildings. All this dates back into the early 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, during the Route 66 heydays. Old car dealers. See, I didn't show this last trip through here. here I think past that brown building up here should be that little park where they got the storyboard look at the car <laughs> cool some of the old signage you know this is becoming so popular also the centennial hundred year anniversary of the route here it is route 66 2026 will mark a hundred years. Okay, let's go check it out. Most people don't even realize this is it here. They got the old railroad ties and a couple old rails marking it. This is definitely a railroad town. Huge coming over the mountains. Small print, hard to read. It's near the 35th parallel. They used camels up here back in the day before they uh, put in the railroads. Then became future Mother Road, Route 66, then freeway. Tons of history here. Famous Escalani Hotel, 1907. Cost 115000 back in them days. That'd be a million bucks now, huh? There you go, there's a picture of the old way it used to look during the Route 66 days where they split it into one-way streets. Pretty cool, huh? It, is this a quick pit stop? Let's head on up to Williams. Wow, that's a lot of stone in it. They sure haul it. Haul it right out of here. Alright, I'm just going to catch uh, 40 back at this end of town. Why not?
All right, from here, we're going to go up an elevation. All this area, their uh, snow season is just starting to end. We ought to see snow-capped mountains up here. Definitely cooler. There's Highway 89. That's what we took a few weeks ago, going down to Prescott and all the way down to Phoenix. Not too many roads cut north and south. Next major one would be clear up Phoenix, which would be I-17. Getting in some small pines, junipers, I believe. There you go, there are some of the mountains. San Francisco peaks. And I see snow up there. Get your skis out. <laughs> they had a pretty good winter up here. Not like the year before, but it was uh, exceeding expectations, I guess. You see a lot of it on the local news here. Even though it's a uh, highway, interstate, it's still a pretty ride up through here. Exit 161, that's the one we want. We'll do a drive through Williams. I'll find, uh, they got a really nice little park with a bunch of storyboards. We'll find those. This is one busy town almost every day. I don't know how many motels they have here. A lot of them have all been restored from back in the olden days. Tons of people. Also, the Grand Canyon Railroad comes out of Williams here, too. From Williams up to the Grand Canyon, just a little over 60 miles. made it here we go don't really have a big choice of <laughs> it's kind of like interstate 40 or nothing um, cutting up through here but that's okay today we're just kind of doing some miles a few little stops tomorrow can't wait we're gonna be up at Lake Powell looking forward to that and the day after that, we're heading on into Utah. This should be about a four video series of this entire epic southern Utah trip. Kind of looking forward to it. Well, we'll go cruise downtown on the old route. The roads are beat up from the winter. Snow ice, snow plows. There's the archway. They got them on both ends of town. Welcome to Williams, Arizona. This place has history on, on top of history. <laughs> A 
I don't know if you can tell. Right off to the left, where the street split here, will be the Grand Canyon Hotel, and that's where the you load the, on the trains uh, head up to the Grand Canyon. I've never done the train trip. Probably will someday. Then right here with a big flag, little uh, rest area. They got restrooms, little visitor center set up. And here comes the motels. I mean, they're one after another. Pretty good sized Safeway. That's about the main store around. I just traveled through here and stayed up here a few times. And here's where they start. There's the Highlander Motel. They all have the Route 66 theme, the old cars. Most of their rooms are fixed up pretty nice. Big murals. Kind of cool, huh? Does get congested driving through here, though. There's a covered wagon, some old cars over there. But if you're planning a trip on the route, I'd say Williams is probably one of your top destinations, especially in Arizona. Then you got all the shops. little bar right there in the corner <laughs> there's that barbecue place huh always smells good driving through there they're cooking how do you like that big mural there Well, I'm going to cut over a block. We'll go up a ways. We'll do the U-turn thing. That's where all the storyboards are. Addicted to deals. Store's been there forever. Turquoise TP. <laughs> then that old gas station there. Got the old pumps. Star Hotel, huh? <laughs> Just a neat, neat place. Then more motels out this direction. Isn't there a ton of them? <laughs> I don't know how many. Alright, then up here uh, we can flip a U-turn. Getting close at the end. Plus a lot of tour buses come through here because they haul people up to the Grand Canyon out of Vegas and Southern California. 
no run through Williams here. Well, I see it there. Let's go up a little farther. I could have turned here. Might as well take the whole scenic route. Looks like that red roof in is all under construction. I stayed there once. Then they got like this roller coaster ride now. That's all different. It's all brand new. Alright, here's the U turn. Alright, right up here to the right's a little park. They got really good storyboards. Here it is, where the railroad cars are. Williams, Arizona. You know the history about mining, ranching, all of it is just vast here. Here you go. Lots of old pictures. Bill Williams, Mountain Man. <laughs> Gateway to the Grand Canyon, which it is. Right up that highway. 1931's that picture. Almost a hundred years, huh? Babbitt Brothers Store. Polson Brothers. They must have been the main business guys up here. Panoramic overview of the city. 1925. Sorry about the reflection. Nothing I can do. Prince Melick. 1905. On his Pierce Arrow motorcycle. <laughs> Here you go, here's about the route. There's the archways, we drove under one of them. I think this year we're going to do the whole route later in the summer. Oop, you didn't hear that. That's a secret. 1925. Where they were camping in their cars. Hey, there's your original RV park. Ooh, look at the snow. <laughs> 1936. Yikes. 1938. Doesn't it look about the same? If that was a color picture, you wouldn't see much difference. 1940. There's the old movie theater. But yeah, except for black and white to color. Not a whole lot's changed in this old town. Then those gateway signs, huh? Pretty cool. Once again, this little park. I mean, uh, it's probably some of the best local history you can get right off these boards. So 2013 is when they put up the gateways.
Grand Canyon Railroad History 1901 They've been running trays up, trains up there forever, huh? My goodness. Pretty cool pictures, though. Railroads of Arizona, yeah, they covered it. Especially over the mountains here. The old iron horse, huh? They need new glass on these. They're kind of getting uh, water stained, I guess you'd say. Ranchers up here, millions of sheep. Logging, heck yeah, I forgot about logging. What a tough job, huh? My goodness. And mining, of course. <laughs> There's gold in them hills. And everything else. And that was all dug by hand and dynamite and hard labor. Pretty cool. All right, well, let's do this. We'll jump on I-40 and head up towards Flagstaff. Time we get up there, it'll be time checking at uh, KOA. I've stayed there several times. It's kind of a perfect little in-between layover for me. Yeah, there is that new facility. Look at the rail for the cars. Fairly new. Very, very pretty up here. I think we're 6,000 in elevation, 6,000 feet. Looks like all the snow's gone. There's the track that goes up towards uh, Grand Canyon. Speaking of which, if you go take that highway, there is all kinds of free camping. Open areas, forest service roads, uh, boondocking, all the way up to the canyon. It's extensive. A lot of people come up here and camp. And a lot of them stay most of the summer, beat the heat. There's our other archway. But yeah, if you want a boondock free camp, a lot of people do it.
another huge attraction here on to the right is Barizona. They got a bunch of wildlife. It's like a little safari. You drive your car through it. One of these trips will do it. Right there, Barizona. Be great for kids and stuff. Look at this guy hauling water. It's one thing about properties up here, you can't put wells in, so you gotta haul water. You can buy land up here pretty reasonable. But, there's the drawback. That's a lot of weight. <laughs> Was it almost eight pounds a gallon? On that little trailer, that guy's got a load and a half. All right, we're gonna continue on I-40. Get on up into Flagstaff. Here's our exit. We passed I-17 back there a ways. This is 89 North up to Page. And did the temperature drop? Since we left uh, down by Ash Fork, probably good 15 degrees cooler. Feels good, actually. All right, it should be our exit. This is all also part of the old Route 66, still here too. too much farther probably got about another three miles up to the KOA it was one of them low teardrop trailers I don't know if I could stay in one of those those things are tiny <laughs> I mean they're perfect to haul around you can haul them with a car so all right we gotta just follow 89 here
that Walnut Canyon National Monument's out this direction. We're at the very east end of Flagstaff here. A lot of shops. All kinds of stuff here. Okay, shouldn't be too much farther. Big KOA. This place is huge. I better get over one lane here. They've had a lot of fires through here. And you see on the news where Flagstaff, uh, it floods out this way because there's no trees. All the erosion, the roads flood. And this is it here. Yay. There's a sign. He made it through that mess. <laughs> Wasn't the friendliest light there. That traffic is heavy. All right, this one night here, you can see the black burnt markings on the bark of the trees here. Alright, let me get my spot. Okay, Starlink's getting fired up here. It's going to be home for the night. Typical KOA, you got cabins. Pretty tight spots. But you get a little picnic table. View of the mountain. Really pretty in here. They got all kinds of events. Low food trailer there. A lot of these KOAs on weekends will have like a pancake breakfast. I think in the summertime. But they're very family oriented. They really gear it towards kids, swimming pools, playgrounds. But to me, place to rest, get ready to keep on trucking. I actually had to put on a jacket. <laughs> well, let me close up the van. I'll we'll take a quick walk around. There's the big sign, Flagstaff KOA. Yeah, you can definitely see charred marks on the trees from fires roaring through here. Sun's going down behind that mountain. But perfect place to call it home for the night. Get ready. First thing in the morning. We're out of here.
Well, good morning. A lot of rigs came in here late. Place really filled up. Right next to the cabins, though, it was kind of cool. Right there is showers, restrooms, real close to my site. So, all in all, mission accomplished. All rested up. We got some miles. We got a few miles we got to do. First thing, we're heading to Lake Powell. We'll be right up on the Arizona Utah border. One thing about KOAs, look how they just pack you in here. A lot of tent camping. A lot of vans, too. I, I walked around again last night, later on, didn't film. Just stretching my legs. Always like seeing uh, different rigs, where they're from, check the license plates. They're all over. See a lot of Florida tags here. Alright. I gotta get some fuel up here. Before we get going too far. And yes, it's early. <laughs> Sun hasn't come up yet. You know me. Yeah, I'll skip that gas station. We'll get another one up here. I think might be a little farther up is where they had all that flood from the erosion. I know it's been on a lot of local news. These homes are just getting slammed with runoff coming off the mountains. San Francisco peaks. It's off to the left. Alright, I better look for fuel here. And I think I see one up here. This will work. There's Mr. Sunshine popping up. Yeah, we got a good 120 miles to get up the page. Somewhere around there. All right, all fueled up. You know, there's a lot of ruins out here. Big volcanic park. I filmed that a couple years ago. But today we're heading for Lake Powell. Might even do a boat ride this afternoon, later on. Thought that'd be different. There's the old sun coming up. Should have good weather today. It's 
no cap mountains at that RV park where we, I stayed uh, that KOA I think that was about 8,000 foot in elevation so kind of gives you an idea lots of snow to melt this year good for the water you can really see the charred bark on the trees a uh, lot of fire in here every year well fire season's almost here normally about June July when the monsoons monsoons are massive thunderstorms come up out of the Mexico a lot of lightning will start them now check this out we're almost out of this uh, wooded area and it just turns into flat high mountain desert <laughs> it's kind of a long boring drive here about the next 60 70 miles And there you go, no more trees. Grand Canyon's off to the left. Off to the west of us is the mighty Grand Canyon. And this up here is called Gray Mountain. A few buildings here. We're going to go up to a little town called Cameron. And that's the turn off that would take you into the east entrance of uh, Grand Canyon. But all these buildings here are abandoned. Looks like old motels. Oh, look, that gas station. That looks like it's still going. Everything else looks pretty closed up. All right, we'll keep on rolling. All right, now we're on uh, reservation land. Cameron up here, I remember when there was nothing here, like one gas station, I think it's called Speedy's, now it's all built up, they've done a ton of work out here. same highway that was in Williams 64 I think it is cuts over here this roundabout here yeah 64 but now you got these gas stations and restaurants actually there's a RV park down by the bridge Anyway, if you take 64, I'll take you into the east entrance of Grand Canyon. They get millions of visitors every year at the Grand Canyon. Bus loads. But this is all developed. Progress, huh? I guess it's good. Alright, 
down here there's the old bridge now it's used for pipelines gas pipelines but this was a crossing because you cr at, will actually cross over the little Colorado River river basin right up here Here it is. I forget the name. Cameron Trading Post. You can get fuel here. And off to the right's an RV park. But this bridge, we're going to cross over the little Colorado River. You can see the old uh, span bridge. Now they got gas pipes on there now gas lines but that was back in the day huh Okay, now it gets really wide open and flat. There's a highway up here that'll cut over to uh, Tuba City and Monument Valley and all those areas. We're not that far from Utah up here. And this is also a little bit of the Painted Desert stretches I believe about 700 miles to Arizona here clear up into Utah starts down at the Petrified uh, National Forest on I-40 which is over by Holbrook comes up to here Here you go. Look at the clay, the color of the clay and stuff on the hills. That's why they call it painted. Looks like someone took a paintbrush, huh? <laughs> that uh, turnoff should be up here for Tuba City, pretty close. But it keeps eroding through the years. There's bending. All those shacks there for uh, vendors. They sell, come out and sell jewelry and stuff. All right, here's the turnoff. This road here would take you over to Tuba City. Kept going, you'd end up uh, going up towards Monument Valley. All that right there. Which I filmed that, what, a year or two ago. Hey, we get around on RV or TV. But isn't this terrain cool? Kind of like driving through Mars, huh? <laughs> Here's your lunar landscape on RV or TV.
cliffs off to the right. We're getting up here a little ways. There's a little town called Gap. Gap, Arizona. G-A-P. There's a little gas station up there. Low community. Part of the reservation. Here it is. Good little pit stop. That station's always busy. A lot of history in this area, mining, all of it. Not that far from the Colorado River. More of those uh, vending shacks for the vendors. All right, we're getting up here. I kind of timed this out. The first stop we're going to do is at the uh, Glen Canyon Dam, the visitor center. That place has always been closed for the last few years, every time I come up here. And online it showed it's open and I want to go inside of it for once. I don't know how many times I've been up here and it's always been closed. Be sure to get over my website, rvertv.tv, sign up for the free newsletter, put one out twice a month. Also got a merch store, all kinds of good things in there, hats, t-shirts, coffee mugs. Once again, it's rvertv.tv. Cliffs running right along the right side of the road. Open range up here, you do see cattle. But the farther north we get, the prettier, to me anyway, I think it is the drive. We're going to go over a little uh, mountain pass up here that's really, really cool. This is the new side camera on the past side of the van. I'm setting up a different angle this year. Not only will we have the rear cam view, but also side cam. So it makes it look like you're sitting right in the passenger seat looking out the window. So I'm still working on some of the angles and getting it dialed in, but we're going to experiment with it on this trip. Some of the side angle, different views, like right there. See, it gives you a better look at the houses, cliffs, and still a little bit of the road. Let me know what you think about the new side angle camera. You know, uh, right after Memorial Day, we are starting up our summer travel season. Estimating 110 days on the road nonstop. Alrighty, guess what? Tomorrow, 
we're going to be uh, trucking this 89A. We're going to pass up the interchange here. We're going to go up the page a day, spend a night. See we, that sign there? It says 89A. I know we're going a little fast, fast paced road, can't go any slower. But tomorrow we're going to cut across 89A all the way into Utah, to Kanab, Utah. That should be one epic pretty drive. Vermilion Cliffs, uh, Lee's Ferry, all of it. That should be very cool, so stay tuned for that video coming up. Now, going over this pass here, this is something else. <laughs> it's not very long, but it's uh, kind of steep, and you go right against the rocks up through here. And what a view you have. This is just absolutely gorgeous through here. The old red color against the blue sky. There's an overlook here. We'll catch that tomorrow. When we cuz we have to come back down through here when we leave page tomorrow. We'll check the overlook. But you can see way out over the valley. Vermilion cliffs and all that is out that direction. That pass is coming up where we go, but I mean, they cut this mountain in half, get this road through. Here's a little look off to the left. We're climbing at a pretty good clip. There you can see uh, part of the Vermilion Cliffs off the left. Big old boulders right next to the road, isn't it? They come tumbling down occasionally. There's the overlook. We'll we'll stop there tomorrow. Don't worry. On the way out. But isn't that something? I mean, we are right next to the mountain's edge here. And here's where they just cut right through this mountain, put this road through. <laughs> Hang on. Made it. Then up here you say what mountain, what pass? This different landscape. We're close to Page. So, kind of a fun trip.
there. Now you can see town. Be the Colorado River, Lake Powell. Page is a pretty good sized town anymore. I'm going to spend the night real close to the lake. Plus I booked us a boat ride. Won't be till later this afternoon. So what we'll do first, go find that visitor center. And then uh, go find that RV park and take us a nice boat ride on Lake Powell today. Right up here to the left is probably one of the most famous picturesque photograph places on the planet. It's called Horseshoe Bend right in the Colorado River. I actually videoed it a couple years ago. It's one heck of a hike down a hill to get down to it and coming back is brutal. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it again. But right up here to the left, this is our parking area. It costs like 10 or 15 dollars, I forget. But it is one of the most scenic places you could ever imagine. I'll make sure there's a link down description to that video from a couple years ago for Horseshoe Bend. Alright, we're getting into the town of Page. Right there, that sign says so. Welcome to Page, Arizona. And we're right on the Utah-Arizona border. It's about as far north as you can get in Arizona. It's a little ways up here. It was uh, about two and a half hours since we left Flagstaff. But we left early enough. Timing should be about perfect. There's the town limits. There's a big Walmart. A lot of people camp in their parking lot. Overnight there. Then off to the right's downtown. We'll cruise through their downtown area after we go uh, to the visitor center. Let's do that first. Water's supposed to be up in the lake, too. What I read online, over 60 feet higher. Lake Powell, Lake Mead, all of it, they've been in crisis mode for years, shrinking rapidly. There's the auto parts. Yeah, this town's really grown up since I first came up here maybe 25 years ago. Maybe 30, somewhere around there. There was nothing out here. I mean, it was a lot barren. It, it just didn't even look like this. Most of the major hotels are here in town. Golf course. Yeah, where we're staying, it's part of Antelope Canyon. It's called Antelope Point and Marina. But it'll be on the other side of town. So right up here will be the Glen Canyon Dam that we're going to be crossing. Big hotels out here. One, two, three of them. 
Oh, look at that at Denny's. I don't remember that. Might have been here. Try to remember, it's been two, two years. Because last year didn't make up, make it up here at all. But after that record snowpack of 23, 2023, both this lake and uh, Lake Mead started filling back up. But they still got a long ways to go. All right, right up here should be the dam. We'll be crossing it. The way they built this bridge, they just bolted it into the side of the rock cliffs. All this is created by the mighty Colorado. Lake Powell, it, hundreds of miles long. It goes way back up into Utah, branches way out. But anyway, here you go. We're crossing the Colorado and off to the right of Glen Canyon Dam. And here's the visitor center that I can finally get inside of it. <laughs> Been years trying to get in here. They have really good parking out back for RVs. I've been here a few times. Yep, they're open. Yay! <laughs> Finally. Yeah, it'd be fun to check it out. All right, I'm glad I made it. I'm tired of driving. Here for the day and the night. Yeah, that boat ride isn't until 4 o'clock this afternoon. And it's still morning, so I've got quite a few hours yet. Well, what do you say? We'll take a little walk around. There you can see the water mark. Yeah, the water is up since last time I was here. Look at that bridge. <laughs> Just bolted in right there. There's the mighty dam and Lake Powell. Yeah, water's up, but it's still got a long ways to go, huh? Perfect day here, nice. Nice temperature, blue sky, no wind. Amazing. What a feat of engineering. This thing was built in the 60s, I think. Late 50s, early 60s. They just chopped that big old rock mountain right in half building this thing. One of the blades for the power turbines. Thing generates a lot of power. A lot of waters pass through here. A 
all part of the Colorado River. All this water will flow down through Lake Mead and then all the way through there and through Lake Mojave, Boyd City, all the way down to Parker. That's a long ways down there. Check it out. <laughs> I was like to work way down at the bottom. They drive through tunnels to get down there. Yeah, the water is up. You can tell from w what I remember. I have to actually go back and look at the old video on that. Right down there is their spillway, which they'll probably never use again. Unless that water gets way, way up. Powell, Major John Wesley Powell. It's named after him. Glen Canyon Dam. Mrs. Lyndon B. Johnson. Christen the dam here. My goodness. That's been a while, huh? <laughs> 1966. There's the mighty Colorado River. Yeah, you don't think of the bridge looking like that when you drive over it. <laughs> that is a long ways down there. That's hundreds of feet. Look how green the water looks though, huh? Well, what do you think? You want to go inside for once? Go check out the inside of this uh, visitor center. Never been in it. It's never been open. Till today. Yay. They don't have tours that go down, do Not they? anymore. No. no. Yep. It's bigger than I thought in here. All about the dam. Pretty good view through these windows, though. Just massive.
Cool looking pictures. There's a good one of the dam and the river. Well, shows uh, all the power. Wow. Still ticking, still going. That's lit up a few light bulbs. I don't know if we're still under uh, extreme drought like we were a couple years ago. This lake was pathetic looking. I mean, it, it was bad, bad. Carl Hayden Visitor Center. Well, I can say I've been in it. It was definitely bigger. Had a few cool uh, storyboards and really good views of the dam out the windows here you go how about some dinosaur tracks well you want to walk out in the bridge heck yeah Might as well, we're here, huh? Green grass. They got the water to water it. Nice little trees. It's like a little park here. I mean, it's day use. You get in farther, then you got to pay to get into the parks and all that. But all this is free access. Free parking. You could easily uh, spend a little time, have a nice lunch, enjoy the views. Do not throw objects from the bridge. Here you go. We're going to walk out. Wow, can you feel the vibration in this thing? Woo! Here you go. I'll stick the camera through here. There's your Kodak moment. Glen Canyon Dam. Pretty powerful. Here's the Colorado Riverside. Those cliffs that go straight up and down. <laughs> Quite the power grid there, too. The sheer cliffs in them. Absolutely pretty here. Those ripples in the stone, that's part of like Antelope Canyon. You get good colors in the sunsets and sunrises. 
with the red tint. Some of it turns purplish in color. There's one of them tunnels way down there. Probably part of the spillway. Alright, that's a big check mark off the list to see that visitor center. That, that always bugged me every time I came here, it was closed. Well, let's do this. We will go cut through town and then uh, make our way over to that marina. Get ready for our boat ride. There's a busload of people walking out on it. That's cool. Now up here to the left you can actually drive back in. I've done it before. There's more day use area. In this big parking area you always see uh, RVs parked here. Lots of RVs up here right now. It get pretty hot here. I mean, uh, in the summer, you might want to be a little farther north. Okay, getting back into town. This isn't the street. I think one more up. Make a left and then we'll cut up into town. Here it is. Downtown district. I think there's a museum. I don't know if it's open today. Today's Sunday, by the way. So we'll see. There's that golf course off to the right, man. That thing is green, huh? Green and plush. I used to golf years ago. Got tired of chasing the ball around. Here you go, it's kind of a horseshoe shaped town. You go around a big loop up here, if I remember right. This more and more motels. Huge for tourism here. Steak, ooh, look at the park. 
Oh, they got story. Oh, we got to come back for that. I just spotted something. And find a place to park. There's a museum. It doesn't look open. Aha, shopping center parking lot. This will work. One thing with the van that's long, easily can't fit in regular parking, so I usually sneak in the, these shopping centers, park out, out of ways. I have an Ace Hardware, looks like a little mall, and bingo! Plus, we get to go for a walk. Would say that museum's closed, but on our way back, we'll walk around it, see an old boat and stuff out there. Oh, wow! I don't know, can you see off there those houseboats? I want to walk back there too. Those things are huge, they're like a floating house. Literally, they're massive. They rent them out. So here's their little park. And I've seen a bunch of signs up here. Looks like their town hall is here. government offices looks like some pretty fancy metalwork sculpture kinda cool looking huh well here you go here's the Park down here at Page, Arizona. Not a whole lot down there, just mainly motels and hotels. A few stores. Here you go, this is what I spotted from the van. Pictures! There's Antelope Canyon. But it's hard to get in there. You gotta buy permits. Scenic discoveries. That's kind of cool. Just the uh, erosion from it all, huh? Navajo generating station. So a big power plant. And Lake Powell itself. We're gonna see that on our boat ride. Hopefully it looks like that. More Lake Powell. Wonder how old these pictures are. There's an old aerial. So you can see it's kinda like got a horse shape to it around the downtown area. Just different. Updates. There's your water flow, water levels. Wow, that looks like Mars, doesn't it? <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, right there it shows the water elevation. So you can see that spike there at the end, it went up. It 
It was way down when I was here a couple years ago. It says 22, 23, 140% normal, of normal snowpack. Pretty cool looking map. When they were building the dam, my goodness. Diverting the water. What a feat of engineering. Rainbow Bridge. That's pretty. More of the Colorado River there. We should see some of this uh, tomorrow when we go through Marble Canyon and all that. Native American near old towns inside the mountain. Cliff drought dwellers, wasn't it? Isn't that what they called them? There's Horseshoe. Too bad it's such a hard hike to get down. Hard for me. Some people can probably do it in the breeze. Well, pretty cool. I'm glad I stopped. I spotted this when we were driving by in the van. Nice little park. Got their sculptures here. Navajo Generating Station. NGS. That is one big power plant. I guess you still need one, even though you got the dam right here generating all that power. Let's go across street. I want to go see those houseboats. Aren't those huge? Imagine how much fuel <laughs> it would take to push that through the water. But they are just floating homes. A lot of people, you know, you get mul multiple families that will rent them. Some are privately owned, I guess. Got the crane on it to lift the dinghy boat in and out. Porches. But they are just massive. This must be the boneyard for them, though. No. How about a slide right there? <laughs> slide right in the water. Pretty cool. I just had to be nosy. Come down here. All right. Keep on trucking. Well, somebody likes the Miami Dolphins there. That's uh, their colors with the license plate. Well maintained place. Looks like a restaurant. Bistro. Got all the flowers uh, blooming. All right, Powell Museum, but they're not open. 
figures. Expedition. Crossing of the Fathers? Okay. Visitor Center, the official. <laughs> Powell Museum. Part about the history of the settlers coming through. Well, maybe another trip. He'll be open. A little bit about the explorers, Powell himself. There's your prices to get in. Here you go. Got a boat undercover. More dinosaur tracks. What's the sign say? Tracks are made by three toed dinosaur. 170 million years ago. Hey, just seems like yesterday, huh? Heck yeah. A little bit about the settlers coming through in their wagons. What a life back then, huh? No roads, freeways, cell phones. Think if those people could come back and see it now, they go, what did you guys do? <laughs> Major John Wesley Powell. Real boat would have looked like this, slightly different. 1869 expedition. This one here was actually used in a Disney movie. Well, that killed a little time to stop in here. Time I get over to that RV park and marina, it should be getting close for our boat ride. not bad. I mean, pretty good sized town anymore. Page is really growing up. Been quite a while since I actually driven through here. Definitely looks different. I don't remember half this stuff. But normally when I come up through here, I just keep on trucking. I don't stop right here in the town. More stores. Big Safeway there. All right, well, let's go find that antelope point. See how this road just kind of winds right around? Big park, look, probably a school off to the right, churches out here.
But I'm cheating. I'm using the phone. Should be making a left right up here to light. Yep. This should cut us down to the highway and we kind of have to loop back around up through Antelope Canyon. Don't forget to get over to my website, rvrtv.tv, sign up for the free newsletter for more information on about up and coming travels for this summer 2024. Once again, rvrtv.tv. Sure, this would take us back towards uh, Tuba City and Monument Valley. What an area, huh? Now there are tours that you can sign up for. See off to the right, all um, cars parked. They load you in like open Jeeps. You can go out and check out the terrain. I kind of looked into that, but really didn't want to spend that kind of time or money. I'd rather take the boat ride, wouldn't you? Ah, cool. There's the RV park we're staying at tonight. Well, still got a little bit before I can go in there. Let me go down here, get parked. We'll walk around. Go for our boat ride. Down there is Lake Powell, Colorado River. They haul you down by golf cart or carts. You cannot walk down there. There's no ramps connecting it. So I'm waiting to get a ride down. Then probably gonna go for our boat ride.
restrooms up here, big waiting area, little gift shop. I guess there's a restaurant down on the water. Right, I'll just wait for my ride down. Made it. That was quite a little wait. Almost half hour. They're busy. It's a Sunday. I have a ticket on the last boat out. Kind of like Gilligan's Island. Three hour tour. <laughs> no, it's a little uh, pontoon boat that takes you up Antelope Canyon. It's supposed to be very scenic. I like looking at oh, these big boats. So, Risk Taker, Cabin Cruiser, big old gas guzzlers, huh? I was told that these huge ones are like timeshares, they're privately owned. And people buy uh, like timeshares to them. And it requires a captain to come out and take you out. But I had my fellow boats. I still like looking at them. A lot of screening on them, keep the sun down. It get pretty warm out in the water. Of course, all these big ones like this, they got air conditioning and all the amenities of a home. Pretty though, very expensive. fun to look at. These are floating docks. They go up and down with the water level. Wow. Millions and millions of dollars. Oh, there you go. Gone dinghy. <laughs> That's a big boat to be a dinghy, huh? <laughs> Yeah, first one at the fuel dock. Just all that electrical. Here you go, here's more of my speed. Small and slow. Still have a little time to kill, about 30 minutes or so before the boat comes in. It's out right now on a tour. Jet skis, you can have them things, no thanks. Not interested. Yeah, that restaurant's up here. Restrooms. But. Hang on, I'm going to switch phones. I'm going to zoom in on why you can't walk down here. <laughs> now, put in your mind that this water level is up over 65 feet since it was a year or two ago. Then you can see the shoreline. There's the walkway you'd fall off and that used to be 65 feet below that boink so those little golf carts there they put in metal ramps and that's how you get down here you have to take a cart 
but look at that. Just like a ski ramp. That's how you get down here. Kind of puts it all in perspective, but what a pretty place down here. Gorgeous. Hey, hey, here's my ride. This is what we're going to go up Antelope Canyon on. On the water. Just let you enjoy the sights and sounds of this boat ride. It's supposed to be very scenic when we go up Antelope Canyon. There's our marina and boat dock. Got a little store. Should be cool. Wow, look at that. That's their main boat launch. You're not launching anything there except maybe a canoe. So it's still got a long ways to get up there. But So it's up 65 feet. Can you imagine what it looked like a year or two ago down from here? <laughs> Be way down.
Okay, here we go. Here's the Antelope Canyon, the entrance to it.
Well, we went back as far as we could, farther than I thought we would. What a pretty, pretty boat ride. Truthfully, this is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Absolutely gorgeous going up through that canyon. Alright, we're heading back to the marina.
Oh wow, look at these guys. Let me get my phone and see if I can zoom in on them. I heard her mention it's a uh, few thousand bucks a day to rent one of them things. Of course, if you got a big family, enough people split it up, I mean, be the same as renting rooms and all that. They all got a slide on them. If you get a chance, if you come up here, or come out to this Antelope Point and take this boat ride, definitely worth it. I mean, something to do. You won't see anything like that ever, going up that canyon by water. I've always filmed from the shore, so I'm really glad I did this. Wonder how much our fuel is. I don't even want to know. <laughs> A lot. This is one big marina, though. Huge. All right. Get docked and uh, wait for my golf cart ride back up to the RV park. Next video, Marble Canyon, Vermilion Cliffs. We're going to drive that Highway 89A all the way into Utah. That should be one epic, epic trip. And after that, we're going to play around a little bit in southern Utah as well. Well, there's home for the night. They got phony grass and all that. Big sights. And got a beautiful view of sunsets and sunrises here. Pretty darn cool. Hope you enjoyed this two day ride up here. I sure did. Journey continues. Talk soon.